Has it ever concerned you what it's like to experience a new culture in a foreign country? Today let's explore the dramatic culture shocks that people from around the world had to face upon visiting Bulgaria. Follow us as we uncover the unique stories of those who experienced those surprises of a dramatic culture change from fascinating traditions and unfamiliar customs. Let's find out the stories of these people. What cultural shocks have I had? Well, uh, I would say driving. Um, it's a little bit different than driving in America. So the parking spaces are really tiny. And so um, driving into the malls or the grocery stores, it's hard to fit a big car into a really small spot. But on a positive note, one of the best cultural shocks or surprises I had was how the Bulgarian people treat babies and little kids and they love babies. And I was fortunate enough to be pregnant here twice and have two babies and raise two little children here. And they're so kind. They let you cut in line and they just love babies. So that was really cool. The real culture shock for me was the absence of bicycles. Uh, the virtual absence of bicycles. Every now and then you see a cyclist, but not to the extent as you find them in the Netherlands. You know, when you drive your car in the Netherlands, <laughs> you have to be very careful not to run any cyclists over. Uh, and most of the time those cyclists are completely suicidal. Um, that is not the case here in Bulgaria. For me, culture shocks, I even had culture shocks, even though I'm, in, I'm Bulgarian. For me, it was different to difficult and different to experience the administration, uh, the, the, all the paperwork that I had to do even to open a simple bank account, that everything is happening slowly and um, you need to speak Bulgarian for everything. And yes, okay, I don't have that problem, but imagine if I, my husband came here alone, he had to hire a translator because we live in the countryside, nobody is speaking English here. So it's kind of challenging, but also beautiful and great. Uh, I think the biggest culture shock for me was how many traditions the Bulgarians have. There's a lot of traditions for Easter, for Christmas, of course, as well. But I mean, like other traditions, like if you're having a baby, for example, you're not allowed to show it to the public for 40 days or if someone passes away you celebrate after those 40 days celebrate their life basically so, and name days there's always a name there's days always days a reason so, for a party uh, yeah <laughs> always excuse for Ricky so uh, from the beginning I had a very big cultural shock because the difference between the Mexican culture and Bulgarian culture are so big for example the Mexican we are more warm people more friendly all the time we want to be happy with this smile and wants to help to other people when you look a foreigner in the corner to wait a bus or I don't know in the subway you immediately say hello amigo what is your name where are you from do you need, do you need help this night is a party in my house do you want to come or uh, do you want to meet my family immediately doesn't matter if he looks like a tall black white doesn't matter the Mexican we are very very friendly people and here in Bulgaria is the opposite because in the beginning for me is a shock because all the time I am like Mexican hello good morning how are you what is your name I am from Mexico and these kind of things and the people look me like uh, you are very crazy <laughs> because I want to smile all the time with my neighbors with uh, the people from the subway for the bus in the taxi I start to talk about my life about my problems and here is very strange they look you like you are very, very crazy person. For me, it's why? Why they don't want to talk with me? Maybe I look very ugly. I have a, something in my face because for me, it's a big shock the, to the people are very cold, very quiet. Like they look very angry. For example, in Mexico, when you meet something, immediately you 
is cut, uh, hug and kiss. You kiss the person, say hello, nice to meet you. I am Selena from Mexico. Oh, how are you? And these kind of things. And here is Zdravete, Pesheno Mipriano, y Cry. <laughs> and for example, nice to meet you, hello, and ciao. But they don't like to, to talk. To, to touch the other people, to to talk a, about uh, these uh, stupid things for the life, and uh, for me it's very very difficult to find what, uh, which is the chip for the Bulgarian people, H how they turn off and they get uh, the smile with me. I lived here eight years ago, and I now maybe understand a little bit more about the Bulgarian person, about the Bulgarian culture. They are very cool, but in the end, when they decide to be your friend, is for the, the rest of your life. They give you, they share you everything. For example, I have Bulgarian friends and they give me everything when I am in problems. I trust in them and I know that they support me a lot. And in Mexico is a little bit because you know you never know who is your true friend because all the people are very friendly with you, but when you need help for the real and in one real problem, maybe you have 10 friends, maybe you have one, or maybe you don't have it. You don't have nothing. And in Bulgaria, no. When the people say, okay, I decide to be your friend, they are your friend for the rest of your life. Yeah, the whole immigration process here was also a little uh, fee uh, because in immigration office here, nobody speaks English. So you, you have to bring somebody local to translate for you. Yeah. Normally in an immigration office, this is a place where, some, where they should be able to speak different languages. But they have, they are very proud about the languages. Uh, language the, Bul the Bulgarian, the Cyrillic alphabet. So many times I confuse the letters because they are similar to the, to the Roman alphabet. So in, in all the ways, sometimes I had to just twist my head trying to, to understand or at least trying to read the signs. The, I also can remember how confused I used to get when I was asking a question to the Bulgarians and the first reaction was no. <laughs> so all the times I was expecting a yes, but the answer was no. <laughs> Anyways, uh, with the time we, you get used to, to this and... One that comes to mind, I am someone who loves to put ice in my drinks all the time. And something I, I had to get used to was that Bulgarians don't usually use ice that much with their drinks. Another one that I really love, and it's one of my favorite culture shocks, is that there's a bakery basically every 10 steps you take. And it just smells amazing. When you're on a tube train in London and, and, and nobody wants to look at you, you know, people are looking away. You don't get that here. Here people are friendly. I, I, I first time I went shopping in Haskova, I couldn't find the supermarket. And I was standing there lost and a woman came up to me and she spoke English. And she said, excuse me, are you all right? I said, well, I'm looking for, you know, the little supermarket. Oh, she said, it's this way. and and. She actually walked some of the way with me and showed me where the supermarket was. And I was stunned and I didn't think that uh, that's, you're not used to that kind of assistance and help, you know, to go without certain things. I mean, you know, takeaways, you can't just pick up a phone and order a takeaway uh, if you live in a village. In a city, you, you might get that, but you're not going to get that in a village. You know, you might get a taxi driver that's not prepared to drive to your village because you know, sure, he gets the fare for taking you there, but driving back, it's a long way for him and it's not worth his while. There's a bus service and bus services for villages tend to be infrequent. So you've got swings and roundabouts. You've the got... biggest culture shock I had when I moved here is how long a meal can last. Now is the time to hit that thump. Now is the time to hit that like button and it will really help to spread this video. And it's very much appreciated. And what is a culture shock? Well, for me, that was the amount of stray animals, which can be really distressing. So we've now adopted nine of them. Uh, for me, 
Personally, he was getting used to a couple of things. One, learning the Cyrillic alphabet, and two, the fact that this is yes in Bulgarian and this is no in Bulgarian. I still get it mixed up. The culture shock I had was seeing all these street animals everywhere, uh, dogs and cats. Sometimes they've been killed, run over. I find that very sad. It's not something I'm used to. And although we find the people friendly and we're very happy, sometimes the customer service isn't brilliant in restaurants and when you buy things and if you have to take them back. When it comes to culture shock, I am still actually adjusting to liking the foods here in Bulgaria because I am not used to eating Bulgarian food. I grew up eating Asian food and it's really far from what Bulgarian food is but I am trying but one thing that helped me is having friends that, who likes to cook and yeah that's what we do we gather every week and we just eat together eat Filipino food and it, it helps me with my homesickness culture shocks <laughs> uh, culture shocks okay quickly well, for me personally it was uh, smoking as we are not smoking people so we don't smoke it's it's quite difficult going to some uh, restaurants and cafe cafes so you it, there's lots of smoking yeah a lot in the streets as well mm -hmm. so you walk in and they are trying to educate people about the, the dangers of smoking in bulgaria again but again a little bit behind on that one for me personally we were very keen recyclers at mm -hmm. home in the cities spotless mm -hmm. absolutely spotless they're cleaning the streets all mm -hmm. the time you start going out of the cities and it's quite bad it's there's a lot of fly tipping going on i know uk has its fly tipping issues but it's not as bad as bulgaria it's mm -hmm. it's not great and it can be quite heartbreaking to mm -hmm. be honest and yeah. pavements and pavements yes so if you're in, if a, you're wheelchair, in a wheelchair forget it <laughs> don't come Oh, because yeah. it's 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 like that and the reason be, because they have so many trees and of course the roots of the trees lift in the pavement yeah and it's uneven so girls know high heels just trainers yeah it's it's you do actually find very smartly dressed women in skirts nice skirts and that they've got their bag with the high heels in but they've also got their trainers on yeah. for for walking yeah. around yeah. slow pace of life here definitely slower definitely yeah, yeah. coming from uk we, we like came off of hamster wheel yeah the life you know when you're going in the airport and you walk on these floor escalators and you come to a stop that's how it is coming here you're moving yeah. along and you stop it but took us time to, to adapt in a new yeah it, it new speed of life yeah. so you always think at the beginning especially to me if people are not smiling i think there is something wrong and it's a bit frustrating because I used to live in Canada, everyone is super happy and looks, you know, everything is amazing, da da da. In Bulgaria, it's not like that at all. <laughs> so, yes, uh, I warn you, if people are not smiling to you, it's not very something wrong, it's just the way they are and you have to accept it. But in the other end, they are really helpful. Anything you might need to be done, if they can help you, they will do it with pleasure and they are not asking for money in return or any recognition. Another thing right after coming to Bulgaria, you immediately meet yourself with roads. So the roads are very bumpy full of holes and maybe the road just ends and there's gravel and you will find very bad roads around here. Cultural shocks I have had in Bulgaria the first time it was a little bit shocking for me the big amounts of cigarettes that someone can smoke in Bulgaria because yeah it's, people in Bulgaria smokes a lot and also to see like young ages, like teenagers smoking in the street uh, was a little bit shocking for me. Also, I would like to say like customer service sometimes is crazy. Not everyone is friendly in the customer service, but in general, I can say that the people are very lovely. Uh, I love it. Maybe, yeah, sometimes I, I face that not everyone is speaking a second language or 
or like English, so sometimes it's hard to communicate it. Bulgarian language is a little bit hard, but with time, with dedication and studying and practicing, you can start like learning the alphabet. So yeah, it's a little bit hard the language, but uh, with time, uh, you can learn it. Being Italian, I found, I have to say that I found people, especially at the beginning, a little bit less open to foreigners, a little bit less talkative, a little bit more reserved. But then I also have to say that when they get to know better and they see that you are willing to make an effort to integrate and that you appreciate their culture, they really open their heart and their hearts are really, really big. If I talk about shocks, as well, I, I didn't have many bad experiences, but I have positive ones. Bansko is a village and I come from a city that's very close to Milan. And a good shock for me was to see that they have so many traditions that are still alive. It happens in Italy as well in smaller villages, smaller than the one I am from. And even though where I'm from, there are some things, uh, some tradition, traditions that are still alive. In Bansko, it feels like it's more um, connected to like a nation past. And it's something that people have been doing for really centuries and that it's something that they pass on to their families. Another nice shock for me was to discover Iran. It's maybe simple and it's very popular. It's a very popular drink among Eastern Europe and Turkey. But at the beginning was a little bit like, whoa, salty yogurt. But then I loved it and it's really good for hangovers, I'm told. Like, yeah, and especially in my village, but I guess it's everywhere in Bulgaria. There is a very sane competition around the garden. And every year, there is a competition to the one who produces the first tomatoes. And then there is another competition around tomatoes, which is the one who will produce the biggest. Uh, <laughs> that is quite that is a quite a different kind of competition. I think it's very sane. I think it's very good. And it's very funny as well. One of the things that shocked me when I first got here I was often told that Bulgarians had a tough shell. They were hard to break into, hard to crack, hard to become friends with, in a sense. But I found that, in a sense, that is true. However, when you start to get to know them, Bulgarians are really wonderful, warm and friendly people that want to talk to you, that want to share their experiences, what they've learned. and. That has been something that's been wonderful to see. It was definitely a culture shock when I first got here um, because I couldn't speak the language very well. And a lot of people were probably thinking, what is this foreigner doing that's trying to speak this language and can barely rattle off a, a sentence? But um, that's definitely changed and it's wonderful to be part of this culture in some sense. Would it be interesting for you to find out any problems that these people faced when they came? and how they solve them problems. Choose this video then.